So in this way, um, that uh, with the uh, full devoted of one's body, speech, mind towards the uh, triple gem and then the one's root guru, uh, subligating in that way through the practice of the Guru Yoga, just uh, uh, relying upon uh, no, relying upon the master that uh, whatever one uh, kind of uh, whatever the situation or condition may happen that uh, uh, just uh, the Lama and Triple Gem will just uh, care for me. <coughs> so only in this world where, where we can just rely or have confidence is the just uh, the Supreme Dharma. <coughs> so other than that, uh, there is no anything that uh, which we could really rely upon or could have that kind of, you know, competence. And uh, tomorrow when we does die, then uh, whatever we have accumulated, all this wealth and money and material belongings that uh, one cannot really carry with oneself. So in this world, uh, in this lifetime, whatever that uh, kind of negative uh, actions uh, that uh, one have accumulated, that is something which uh, comes with you, and uh, that whatever the uh, Dharma practice and accumulation of merit one have done, that will follow with you. Uh, other than that, uh, there is no anything we can carry, even this our body. <coughs> <coughs> So, uh, including all that, uh, even the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, and even just, you know, lowest realm, like a, a tiny bit of an insect, that uh, everyone is in the nature, on nature of death. There is no anyone just uh, uh, live a life. <coughs> So at, at that time, then uh, no, no anyone can really just uh, benefit even one's father or mother or relatives or friends or anybody. <coughs> <coughs> So even one, uh, even one have uh, enough wealth that uh, in according to Tibetan just uh, uh, tradition, then uh, when that happens, then uh, one spend all those money for the uh, for the uh, practice of the Dharma. <laughs> Even then, uh, just uh, uh, once when one die, and then uh, just uh, one's family or whoever, uh, however they are just uh, uh, kind and loving to you, um, but still they may not really spend the whole money after you. For example, like if you have one hundred uh, one hundred thousand dollars, then maybe about uh, twenty thirty uh, thousand maybe spent for the just all this uh, practice of dharma, and rest maybe just you know spend for oneself. <laughs> And the person who is just uh, really just dying, 
or just uh, who uh, experienced the death, then still one have so much, you know, attachment to one's, uh, you know, family or like one's, uh, you know, just uh, uh, one's uh, uh, husband or wife or just wealth and money. Um, but it is kind of, you know, just uh, completely uh, attached to it. Even within this lifetime, also one cannot just uh, release that attachment, and even just you know when death happens, also it is difficult. So even one cannot release it, release that kind of just attachment, but still there is no any freedom that one have to leave everything behind and have to go. So as we just uh, be uh, as a human being, uh, in a way, if we just uh, calculate uh, who lives about like uh, 80 year old, then like 40 years, you know, we have been sleeping. <laughs> And then the uh, rest of the 40 years that uh, whatever the time we spend for is the all the worldly activity where we accumulate all these kind of five poison, you know, afflicted minds. And uh, it is very, very few who just spend some time for the Dhamma practice. <coughs> and within that day, uh, out of, you know, 40 years, that even like uh, five years, uh, also one have not really done a good practice of Dharma. So, uh, still, you know, that whatever one have some benefit or something that uh, positive things are happening, all everything is just uh, really based on that, uh, you know, Dharma practice. You know, and even just uh, when we are doing a little bit of Dharma practice, still, you know, our mind is just uh, so afflicted with all these kind of afflictions. This is uh, not necessarily I have to explain to you, just if you examine your own mind, you know, you can just uh, experience and understand. So in this way, just uh, one uh, try to do all this uh, Dhamma practice uh, best to the one's uh, level and uh, just uh, also there are uh, other uh, teachings and instructions are just, you know, coming. According to that, uh, the most important is uh, that uh, how one can apply into practice in a proper way. <laughs> So this uh, Dharma teaching or the Dharma practice, which means that uh, uh, since from the, like uh, starting from the window, that all everything is, is uh, just a method or a solution that uh, how you can just uh, purify all your obscuration and uh, uh, negative uh, karmas, and then uh, how you can just uh, really train with that. Uh, train your mind into the, you know, its own true, to realize the true nature. So, uh, once upon a time that uh, there were two great uh, merchants that uh, in the very ancient time, uh, in a fortunate eon time, that uh, they also could to just go to the you know, ocean and they can get uh, uh, the real wishful feeling gem. So there were two uh, merchants who were just kind of very good friends and they both got one each. <laughs> And 
and then they are just uh, staying in the different places and uh, the whole uh, area becomes just uh, naturally very rich. So one family that uh, the merchant has a uh, like wife and uh, you know children and uh, in that way and then uh, one one day that uh, you know merchant he, he died <coughs> and then since that uh, their you know father the merchant when he was just died then uh, they are just uh, kind of you know losing all their wealth and everything they become just really very poor and then they are just uh, really become very poor that they, they become a beggar and then they just uh, the rest of the you know, family they all just go around into the city just begging for food. And then as they were just wandering and begging for food and then uh, one day they reached to that uh, the another uh, merchant's house who was the just very good friend of their father. And then this merchant, you know, instantly recognized that uh, this is the, just my merchant friends, you know, the family. And then he asked, you know, why you are just begging here? And said that you have the, you know, wishful feeling, Jane, and that uh, you can just live, you know, very happily, prosperously while you are begging. So then they said, you know, our father is just dead and then all our just wealth and everything got exhausted and then we become very poor and then to survive ourselves we have been just backing around in the city. And then he said, you know, just uh, actually what is left there in the home. And then they said, you know, that uh, there is nothing left, only that uh, under, you know, father's pillow there is uh, just a piece of rock, uh, other than that there is nothing. <coughs> and then he said, you don't necessarily have to beg like this, you know, you just all go back to home, you know. And then he, he also together went back to their home and then, you know, he checked that they found that, you know, wishful feeling came under his pillow. <laughs> And then they just, you know, clean up that, uh, just uh, stone, the wishful feeling gem, and clean up, and then they do all this kind of purification, and then they did the supplication uh, to fulfill their wishes, and then according to that, they again have, you know, great deal of wealth, and they become rich again. And also, they get nervous, so that uh, we, in a way, just, uh, we have that uh, uh, most greatest uh, wishful feeling gem in our, just, you know, in our mind stream, which is known as the Buddha nature, which is, you know, 100,000 times uh, greater and more precious than those, you know, gems. And these, you know, wishful feeling gems, of course, you know, they have that uh, power to give you some wealth uh, and to fulfill your wishes only for this lifetime that cannot protect you from the, you know, next life, you know, suffering. And 
and the, the wish fulfilling gem which is within our mind stream known as that uh, Buddha nature. And if we could just uh, purify all this, you know, obscuration and affliction, and then uh, once we attain enlightenment, you know, that uh, that is just the ultimate uh, happiness and prosperous that which we can, you know, enjoy forever. <laughs> This uh, we not necessarily have to buy or not necessarily have to look around or not necessarily have to borrow from anywhere. So the wishful feeling gem that which we have, it is like that, you know, the cleaning the wishful feeling gem and uh, similar like that we purify our, you know, all this karmic obscuration and that way we could uh, just have all these wishes fulfilled. <coughs> if we don't uh, understand or realize the quality of this, our wishful feeling gem, then however we do, you know, any kind of practice, you know, it does not really help. <coughs> If, you know, uh, that uh, in the ground or uh, in the earth, if there is no real, you know, just uh, uh, gold, then however you may just, you know, mine it, you cannot really get the gold. And if there is a just, uh, you know, gold mine, and then if you put some effort and work out on that, you know, then of course you can get some gold. So this uh, within ourselves, this uh, great uh, wish fulfilling gem like uh, this uh, Buddha nature, uh, which has uh, which has uh, accomplished with all the uh, enlightened qualities and the omniscient mind and everything. So as we just uh, carry through the practice and purifying all this uh, obscuration, through that we accomplish with the everything. <laughs> So all these uh, qualities are within ourselves. It is not that uh, coming uh, from somewhere else. This year only, Kangale Mandrembasi, Saint Hugh Jeb, Saint Seteo, how do you judge among the upper head the other, Saint Seteo, Judge Mosiguru? So in this way that, uh, you know, just uh, you know, going through hardship of the practice, you know, not being just uh, becoming uh, tired or just losing courage. And then uh, most important is that, you know, the bodhicitta that uh, has been explaining every time, which is, you know, very important. <coughs> And even the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas that are benefiting the sentient being and that also have many different uh, just uh, levels of uh, their activity. As an enlightened Buddha that uh, there is no difference in their you know, enlightened qualities. So it is just because of in the very beginning, uh, based on their uh, generating uh, the bodhicitta or that uh, their intention that uh, whether they could have a vast or just kind of narrow, based on that, you know, that uh, when they attain ultimate fruition, then it makes differences. <coughs> So anyway, this uh, accumulation of merit, that which is known as the just uh, conceptual accumulation of um, uh, merit and uh, non-conceptual accumulation of uh, the wisdom, uh, somehow that uh, accumulating these two, merit and wisdom, is always important. 
Bella Gurumbojiki, Tujisila, Terons, or Lemon, or Tayobaji, did that them on your was. So maybe I might have told you before, uh, anyway, that uh, even in Tibet, uh, based on the great, uh, great uh, kindness and the wisdom of uh, Guru Pama Sambhava and then the just uh, positive comments of the Tibetan, that uh, there also happen these uh, great uh, many uh, treasure revealers. <laughs> So these uh, treasure revealers, uh, such as like uh, Guru Chowang, and then uh, Rana Lingba, and then uh, Tetan uh, Nyang, Nyang Re Nimose, and then uh, this uh, Taksham, uh, these all are just uh, very powerful and uh, uh, great uh, revealers. <laughs> and all these uh, revelations, of course, they revealed out many uh, precious, you know, Dharma textbooks, not only that, uh, other materials such as like, you know, um, Bajras and uh, Kilayas and then the statues that uh, some are really even very huge and uh, their qualities are inexpressible. Like, uh, you know, Taksham Nidin Doje, who was a great uh, treasure rebuilder, whatever he need, he, you know, rebuilt out from anywhere. So that uh, he would usually rebuild out everything like uh, all these, you know, bajaras and bells and then all these, uh, you know, the Dharma musical, the symbols, and then uh, even like, you know, horse saddles and uh, all those, you know, carpets and, uh, you know, anything that uh, whatever he want to uh, just uh, need, you know, he can just rebuild out in that way. <coughs> and also that, uh, you know, temples, all these kind of, you know, banners and uh, uh, hanging uh, uh, these, uh, uh, like, uh, yeah, banners, uh, all these kind of, uh, many different colorfuls that uh, rebuilt out from the treasures. So these all are in a way just uh, in their many previous lifetime just uh, has accumulated great deal of merit and because of that they could just to really do that. And then uh, there are also some treasurer rebuilder uh, who really does not have uh, any accumulation merits. And uh, he is uh, just you know, so poor that even he have just you know revealing out all these you know these uh, teachings, and then even you know he even could not find a piece of paper to write it down. So, so that uh, Guru Pema Sambha knowing about this and then uh, just uh, hidden uh, into a treasure, uh, just uh, a big donkey with the, you know, whole luggage of gold. And then this uh, treasure revealer, you know, he also just thought, oh, now just, you know, Guru Maji has been very kind to me. Now I, I'm going to rebuild out this, you know, gold. So I'll become very rich. And then uh, when he just uh, 
know the place where he had to <laughs> build out that, and then uh, he went there and he found that uh, you know, the donkey, a tiny bit and pieces of a gold, and that which is he rebuilt out from the treasure. Son of the method, Guru Mahaji ki then only to say no do that, you know, wrong so so long or young do that. So that uh, because uh, when one does not have enough accumulation merit, even that, you know, huge things also just, you know, turn into like tiny things that you really cannot really get it. This is not so far. So that is why just uh, to accumulate merit is also very important. And also very important is the generating bodhicitta. Generating bodhicitta or that uh, known as awakened mind is that, uh, you know, the nature of the mind, how you really think in a proper way. So that uh, generating, uh, generating bodhicitta in a way that, uh, you know, just from our heart, that uh, thinking, you know, to benefit all descendant beings, like, uh, you know, one mother with one child, and, uh, you know, just uh, uh, from one's, you know, core of heart, that uh, thinking uh, to liberate them, all these, you know, descendant beings from the, you know, samsara, and then lead them to enlightenment, and in that way, just uh, one have to think and even, even do aspiration prayer and then you know get it through practice and even like these great both sattva like all of the shora and manjushri and uh, so forth that uh, when they also generate the bodhicitta, that uh, until they could just stir out the whole samsara and all sentient beings attain enlightenment, till to that, you know, I don't want to attain enlightenment. In that way, they generate a great, uh, you know, most greatest way of generating bodhicitta. <laughs> And uh, there is no any bodhisattva who is just thinking, oh, just uh, I need to be just happy or prosperous or, no, or peaceful. Sentient <laughs> So even like uh, the Amitabha Buddha in the very beginning, he did all this, you know, aspiration prayer and generating the bodhicitta that uh, uh, in the future when I attain uh, enlightenment, my just, you know, pure field, maybe the, you know, Sukhavati, the great, uh, um, the great Western paradise, and uh, just uh, one uh, myself may attain enlightenment in the name of you know Amitabha, and uh, that uh, even you know very very ordinary standard being with the you know completely all this afflicted mind and obscuration, they may also just born in my uh, in my pure field, and once they were just you know born, that they may never ever get afflicted with all this kind of affliction, and they would attain complete you know. 
enlightenment within that lifetime. In this way, just, you know, did all this aspiration prayer and then, you know, generating bodhicitta uh, until to that uh, get accomplish all this, my, you know, aspiration still to that day, uh, I may not attain enlightenment. In that way, as one just, you know, carry through the practice and then, you know, uh, eventually all everything, uh, all the aspirations got accomplished in that way. Tata. So, uh, right now, that uh, Amitabha Buddha in the Western Paradise, in the Sukhavati, you know, attain enlightenment just only, you know, before uh, 10 days. And the Amitabha Buddha's, you know, pure land, the pure fields, like a one day is like a equal to uh, this our world, you know, time like, you know, one eon. And uh, that way that uh, one just live for like a countless uh, eons of lifetime and then, you know, just uh, give all this Dharma teaching to all these, you know, beings. <coughs> So that is also from the beginning that uh, having a great, uh, great deal of uh, generating the bodhicitta and because of that, uh, you know, one could have all these uh, accomplishments. So we also that, uh, you know, the, we also good to generate, you know, the bodhicitta, the awakened mind. Uh, it is just only a matter of whether we could just, you know, think and, uh, or not. And uh, always that uh, we have to get rid of the self, uh, self uh, concept or self-benefiting. And in this way, if we, you know, constantly carry through practice, then, you know, of course, you know, in the future we'll become uh, great bodhisattvas. <laughs> so this is just, you know, it's one's own responsibility that uh, one has uh, these, you know, capability if one apply into practice, not necessarily have to, you know, get any help from anywhere else. <laughs> So, like, a, for example, in, you know, America, even you just want to build a, you know, a small house, then first you have to get permission, and even you have permission, then, and then again you need money to buy all these things, and has to go through all this kind of, you know, process. So to generate bodhicitta, you really no need to get a permission or no need to get money or no need to just, you know, to work in that way. So every morning we are just receiving the bodhisattva vow and that itself is that uh, how we generate the bodhicitta. And uh, every every time, just uh, we ha we try to have the you know vastness of the generating bodhicitta, and then upon that also do lots of prayers. Okay, that is So then uh, today, uh, of course, there is no any specific uh, teaching for any of these three groups. So you all just can carry through your practice. Okay, thank you. Yeah.